look, I want to start with this. Obviously, a lot of those factors that Matt talked about there in the setup, you know, COVID being very high, rising rates, all of that is having huge impact on the equity market, lots of volatility. I wonder, in that environment, how companies go out and do the kind of big stock component deals that we saw drive so much of that activity in 21. Yeah, well, we're, I think there's going to be challenges, you're right, in doing deals with equity consideration. Uh, you know, there's a lot of clients all of a sudden looking at uh, so, so where their equity is trading now relative to where it was uh, several months ago and thinking twice about some of the deals uh, where they would have a strong equity component. Nonetheless, I still think there's a lot of reasons that we're going to see uh, pretty steady deal flow, uh, including, ironically, uh, you know, every, we keep hearing about supply chain headwinds. I think the supply chain could actually lead to more momentum for deals because we see clients looking at some of the folks in their supply chain uh, may have lower margins, but the advantages now of certainty uh, from buying vertically and integrating are, are, are there. And also when you're looking maybe at some recent performance that was off or some near term projections that may be off, uh, all of a sudden you think, well, maybe those are going to reverse themselves in the relative near term. So that may give rise to some more, uh, some more activity. But then, then, then do we go to the kind of um, record levels that we saw in 2021 again? Can we get, can we get that high? Well, I mean, there's a regulatory headwind issue that you, that you threw out, which is a fair point. But I, what I'm seeing is clients, you know, there was a time a year ago there was a view that these issues were really only for you know a select group of companies. Then, starting around last summer, there was panic. It seemed like everybody had read an article about Lena Khan or the UK, UK CMA uh, blocking deals. And then, uh, toward the end of the summer, the last few months, clients have been very strategic. So I think clients are not as intimidated right now about the regulatory headwinds. Nonetheless, we're going to see a lot of surprises there. And so I think there's going to be a lot more thoughtfulness going into merger agreements. We're going to see a lot more detail. We're going to see a lot more uh, what I call fix it first, where rather than waiting to haggle with the regulator and have the regulator come back and say, this is what you got to do, just take care of business for the regulator through private ordering on your own. But Ethan, what do you tell clients as it relates to that? Because as you say, on the one hand, you have you know, a lot of uncertainty, whether it's the CMA trying to tear down the Facebook Giphy deal retroactively or whether it's Lena Khan and everything going on at the FTC, which, as you say, is a great unknown. On the other hand, you have sellers wanting a lot of conditions going into any merger agreement to say, look, if you're going to agree to buy us, you really have to, to do it. There's a lot of hell of high water language. How do you manage that? How do you manage clients going into those deals where potentially there are going to be issues that they can't possibly foresee at the beginning? Yeah, that's, I think we're going to have an interesting year in part because there's a lot of hell or high water covenants out there that have been signed up over the last year or near hell or high water covenants. And when we say hell or high water, what we mean is that buyers have said, I'm going to do whatever it takes, whatever the regulator requires in order to get the clearances necessary for closing. And I think there's a lot of curveballs we're going to see thrown by folks like UC UK CMA and DOJ, FTC, Europeans, and also on the foreign investment uh, regime front. And so what's going to happen in response to that? I think there may be a lot of tension. We may see some very interesting litigation. So how do I advise clients entering into that? On the sell side, I'm pushing for much more detail. And when I'm on the buy side, uh, you know, we're trying to be competitive. That's the main thing. We really want to make sure that we're able to distinguish ourselves and not be prejudiced by the fact that we may have uh, many months out there. So we have to do some creative things. There's some companies, you know, to the idea of being 18 months between sign and close can be very intimidating. A lot of these companies are burning cash. So maybe we have to do some creative financing for them on the buy side. Uh, but, you know, you have, you have to be creative and push in order to distinguish yourself on the buy side. There's a lot of, when you're representing strategics, there's a lot of private equity competing right now. I found strategics to over the last year and a half to be incredibly agile relative to where they were uh, historically and able to compete very effectively with private equity. And then uh, let's not uh, discount private equity is now facing its own set of issues. A lot of their investments are foreign. And so they're having to deal with CFIUS and other foreign in, uh, investment regimes. And in, uh, they also, among their funds, 
they're so big, some of these uh, firms, that they have their own antitrust issues to wrestle with. And it's a very tricky because sometimes the antitrust issues involve investments by different funds, so it's not so easy to, to fix. Ethan, with all this competition and inflation, what do you think about prices? Are they going to be higher? You know, uh, I think there's still a pretty strong investor universe out there, not just activists, but also the a lot of the traditional uh, act actively managed funds who are not typically known as activists are out there very aggressively uh, communicating with boards and setting their expectations yeah. for what kind of price is acceptable to them. So I think there is a lot of pressure from the investor universe to keep uh, premiums at pretty uh, attractive uh, margins.